book of Philippians this morning, chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, we've talked about the remedy for anxiety. Through my observation personally and prayerfully, maybe you see the same thing or hopefully you do and understand, but so many people are struggling. And so many people are dealing with emotional, and that's what Dr. Anderson was giving you early, emotional issues and imaginations in their mind or believing what somebody else said, and all those things cause anxiety, cause you to be over-concerned, cause you to be troubled, cause you to have care about things or trying to fix things yourself, cause you to handle uh, uh, anxiety come as a result of us having threats of dangers and self-esteem, separation from others, death. You know, some people are always uh, uh, alarmed at my peace when I've experienced uh, having to bury loved ones. Father, mother, sisters, brother, children. And people have asked me, well, you're not upset. Are you not real? You're not acting real. See, you've got to understand the peace of God surpasses. Amen. When you got something in your knower, are y'all with me? That doesn't bring on anxiety where you're going to lose your mind. Some people think I got to take extra pills and I got to get on, on this and drugs. Come on, people. What have you been believing all this time? So when those threats come in, you got to understand. See, I, I take it two ways. You either in the Lord, and if you're in the Lord, to be absent in this body, you're going to be present. I sorrow, but I don't sorrow as if I don't have any hope because those that are dead in Christ are going to be caught up to meet us. And the dead shall rise first. So I got something to know and hold on to. So these threats don't bring on the same anxiety. Are you with me? When I walked in my mother's room and she was uh, uh, passed on and went on to glory, uh, uh, January 1, 1997, daddy called me and said, come on over, mama's not answering me. And I said, well, wake her up. He said, son, I can't wake her up. She's gone. So when I walked in the room and, 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 and she's laying there in the bed, I'm talking about anxiety. I could have fallen to pieces. But even though my father was in the Lord, he's a pastor and all those things, he, he needed comfort at that time. And I just remember him just laying his head on my shoulder. And I let him weep as long as he wanted to weep. And I said, it's going to be all right. And he said, thank you, son. Because, see, see, when you know something, you got to be in a position that you're not cracking up and going crazy. Are y'all with me? you got to know how to be strong if you know something. Now, if you're not, you're just going, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't live. Mama's gone. I don't know. What. You're going to do what you've been doing. Come on. How many of y'all been there? I just, I can't make it. You cannot become suicidal at somebody else's death. These things are going to happen. Come on, people. I'm trying to tell you, how do you handle it? What is the remedy for anxiety? So anxiety comes. Let me move on. As a point of threat, danger, self-esteem, separation. Uh, that, and not that I don't care or I'm not concerned. Some people had to shake me or ask me or touch me. Or, are you all right? Are you in denial? No, I'm in a mode of peace. Now, if they weren't in the Lord, you say, well, what if my brother wasn't saved or sister wasn't saved? Well, there ain't nothing I can do now. While they were breathing, if I didn't share the gospel. And then you got to make a mission and commission. So you're going to share with somebody else. I remember my brother uh, is in intensive care. And I'll go in the room and I said he was a minister as well. But, but, but he couldn't breathe or talk. was on machinery and all before he passed. And, and I, I got down to the bed and whispered in his ear. Because we had just talked two weeks before that. Both of us talking about gospel and ministry. He was like, your conviction is so strong and it's so strong in the mind. I told him, man, if you're saved, you're saved. Don't let nobody talk you out of it. Amen. Ain't how well you preach. And so I leaned over and I said to him in that intensive care room, I said, uh, we just had this conversation. I, I, I said, if you die tonight, are you sure where you're going? I said, I know you can't talk to me, but nod your head and squeeze my hand. And, and so he squeezed my hand. I said, we just talked about this. So, so if God don't raise you up, don't be afraid. Amen. Parents got in town that day. They went to see him. By the time we got back to uh, Cartersville, where I lived, sat down in the chair. We got a phone call from the hospital that your brother just passed. And, and the point I'm making is I had assurance. 
And I wonder, it may not seem the right thing, but you don't just let people slip away because they went to church. See, y'all attitude got to be, what if God don't raise me up? I ain't taking this sickness and disease to heaven. Anybody believe that he has a tree there that a leaf will wipe away all your diseases? You ain't going to he uh, heaven with cancer. I'm talking about all these things that, that have anxiety. See, when you get rid of the anxiety, you'll live longer. Because anxiety will stress you out. You hear the word corona, you just go to panicking. Somebody around, I got to get a test. Why not get a praise? Why not get a prayer life first? Let me finish, let me finish. I got to go to the scripture. I, Philippians chapter 4. But, but anxiety is caused by threats, conflict, uh, where we have concerns in, in various areas and we either going to approach it or avoid it. It's deal, it's, it comes as a result of fear, comes as a result of unmet needs. We dealt with the survival, security, sex, uh, significant self-fulfillment fulfillment and selfhood. It comes as a result of physical issues, disorder, panic, chest pain, fatigue. As soon as something happened to us, we concerned. And over long. Let's, let's look at Philippians 4, 6. It said, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for how many things? Nothing. Be anxious for how many things? Nothing. But everything by prayer and supplication. So you have no anxiety, no worry, no trouble, no over concern about nothing. But everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made to, uh, known unto God. And then verse 7, because I might read it with me. Come on, y'all read it with me. And the peace of God. Come on, y'all read it with me. And the what? Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Come on, so whatever I'm thinking about, the peace of God is greater. Yes, yes, yes. Whatever I can imagine. Cast down what? Imagine. So when I cast it down, I bring everything into the obedience of the word. Yes, yes. So when I bring my imaginations, my thoughts, and the new King James said, your arguments, your conversation in your head, you're arguing back and forth, good and evil. How many know good and evil is always fighting each other? Your spirit is in war against your, your flesh. And so therefore, the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Uh, it does what? Well, guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Somebody give him praise. So anxiety is trouble, trouble of cares, trouble for a thing, looking out for a thing, seeking to promote one's interest, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I gave you these scriptures, and I want to go back. I, I, I left off last week talking about a good word. How many know the word is greater? Yeah. Bringing every thought into the obedience of the word. Bringing every thought into the what? Obedience of the word. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal. Your weapons are not physical. They're not natural. It's not your job. Well, I lost my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. The Lord's my shepherd. I shall not Amen. want. Amen. So it's not my resource. not this. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. But my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. How is he going to do it? Through Christ Jesus. Amen. I can do all things through Christ. That does what? Strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. It is Christ working in me both to will and to do. For his good pleasure. It's not about my ability. So you become over concerned when you start counting and, and looking at your own accolades. I achieved this. I achieved it. I went to school. So many people. I heard somebody the other day was bragging. I got a master's degree. I was talking to somebody. said, I got a master's. And I got, you know, so people are so. Come on. Up in themselves. Are y'all following me? Full of them, you know, master degree, and we still can't figure out life. Amen. I mean, if you go to school and study, right, and take the class and read the book and answer the test, you know, correctly, you're going to get the degree. But that don't mean you have a degree of faith. And so many people would do, see, because you're putting this care on your ability. Are you understanding me? And then that brings anxiety. So they, people are upset they didn't hire me because I have a master's degree and down to that and I'm overqualified. But sometimes you don't have the personality to be in that office. Especially if you're just frantic and panic all the time over everything. 
I said to somebody up there, I was dealing with something, and they was like, oh, man, that's, I said, you know, you got to have a crisis plan. When the wind come, the rain, the flood, stand on the rock. Those that standing on sand, the wind, the rain, the flood come, so it's coming up, but you got to have a plan. Is anybody planning to trust God and praise him? See, that's why I was giving you an opportunity earlier to lift your hands and go and pray, but you're waiting on trouble to praise. You wait until something starts. Now you want to fast. Everybody fast with No, Jesus said this kind only goes out by fasting and praying. When that boy was going crazy, when that father couldn't do it, and he brought him to Jesus and said, your disciples could not. He said, this kind only goes by fasting and praying. What am I trying to say? You don't wait till the trouble rise or the situation is beyond your control to start fasting. You build yourself up in your most holy faith. Jude 1 and 20. So, so we've given you those things. Uh, let's go to Proverbs, or you can just write it down real quick. I've covered this. I'm going to go somewhere else here today. Anxiety, is, uh, anxiety in the heart of a man or heaviness of the heart in the King James causes depression. What does it cause? Depression. But a good word makes it glad. Somebody praise God for a good word. Somebody praise God for a good word. And I've given you these scriptures, Proverbs 25, 11, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and, and pictures of silver. I've given you Genesis 15, 1, and the Lord spoke the word of, to Abram in a vision. So in other words, you've got to visualize through the word that you've got victory. Thanks be unto God who always calls us to triumph. How many see it in the word? And Job 2, 11, 13, Job friends uh, didn't know what to say when they saw his predicament. How many know you can't get your answers from man? Don't walk in the counsel of the what? Ungodly. Psalms 119 verse 9, for those of you hearing it for the first time, how can a young man cleanse his ways? How can a young man uh, uh, fix his ways? By taking heed to the word of God. Not just going to a psychiatrist. Some people get upset with me when, I, you know, a psychiatrist, some people, some people do need a psychiatrist. <laughs> Listen to me, but believers ought to need the word of God. Some people do need a psychiatrist because they're not depending on anything else but their self. And so they need to talk through and rationalize and see if they can come in grip with what they're dealing with emotionally to get over the hump. But believers ought to have a praise life and a word life and a trust level that what God promised, he's able to perform it. They ought to have the attitude, 1 Kings 8, 56, none of his promises have failed. They ought to have the attitude, Ephesians 6 and 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and then put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And when you've done all to stand, you get your foot grit uh, down in the sand and down in the rock, down in the word, and I'm going to stand. Not crack up. Dr. Anderson just told, don't be drunk with wine. How many of you got wine bottles in your house? And tell about you a believer. And every time you get a problem, you go to the bottle. How many of you on some kind of medication or pill that's trying to deal with depression? You cannot handle depression with medication. That means after one prescription, you should be okay in your mind. You're taking all this medication and still crazy. Something's wrong. There are physical issues. Listen to me. I, I talked about the physical part. People, some people are bipolar. If you look up bipolar, bipolar deals with the front lobal part of the brain where people are indecisive. They don't know whether to eat, sleep, drink, whatever. They, they stay up all night and, and sleep during the day or they snap. Some of you look at bipolar just by mood or attitude or anger. But it's a serious issue. I, I, I have to pray for people that's come and have issues. So I have to be learned about the physical body. When I was in school, I had to take uh, biology and, and counseling and all those stuff in Bible school. And I had to take it in the secular school at, at the university. So I hated it. When I sat in university class, the auditorium was about this large, and, and everybody was in there, and the teacher just lectured, and, and, and it made you crazy when you got out of class. Are y'all with me? But when I was in Bible college, they were telling me in 1993 that you need to understand the physical body so that you know how to pray with people. So when I began to read it, bipolar or stroke, when your right side is not working, the stroke is on the left side of your brain. 
And when your left side is not working, the stroke is on the right side of the brain. So if I'm going to lay hands on you and want immediate deliverance, then by knowledge, I can lay my hands right on the right side and get your left side straight. Somebody give God praise. But see, some of us are unlearned. We don't know about our body. Sleep deprivation. Some of you are not sleeping or you got the TV on all night. And when you got the TV on, sometimes stuff will come on at night that you have no business being indulged in. And the devil is ministering to your spirit because he knows you're not sleep spiritually. So you'll wake up in a crazy, in a stu Anybody been there? Come on, you been there? So I have to make sure when I'm in a hotel somewhere, I don't have a TV in my bedroom. I have one in the sitting room part of my bed. But I, I have to make sure I turn the TV off. Are you with me? I remember being in France and Paris and uh, TV was on. And they play pornography in Paris like it's normal uh, sitcoms. Oh, yeah. Sometimes posted up pictures, this, that. And, and so I can remember waking up and, and pornography is on. See, the devil has to find a way to get stuff in your spirit. When I watch a football game, come on, I know who let the dogs out. Are y'all here? I don't have the album. Come on, if you watch the, the champions or whatever it was yesterday, a weekend, uh, you know, all the rap. I notice how they feature all of the rap artists. They bleeped out the cuss words. But if you got it on in your car, that's how you learn how to cuss fluently. That's how your children learn how to cuss fluent, and they know rap songs better than they know scripture. Come on, a good word. And then you're not quoting the word at home, so as so, so, soon as something happens in your life, blam. And then you say, excuse me, oh, oh excuse me. People cuss around me all the time. Somebody did it the other day, they said, oh, excuse me. But if you're a cusser, ain't no need excusing yourself with me. See why? Because you, you on and on, da, 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 da. you know, hip hop, and that stuff is in your spirit. You don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to believe me. Just get in your car when you go home in the last radio station that was on. And you're asking God, why am I going through what I'm going through? Hello? There's too many ladies in the church. I got to move on. I'm trying to be Beyonce instead of be saved. <laughs> Look at your praise team. Look at your church. We, well, our bodies are all exposed. Leggings and tight clothes on. Women, men don't even have to guess when you come to church. Mm. Look at some of them. I'm to my praise team. I'm looking at some of them and I'm like, man, everything is exposed. And I'm like, how in the world would you say, now you're causing anxiety to some of the brethren that, are y'all following it? <laughs> they came to praise the Lord. I mean, tight, fitting, creasing. And then when the wrong man says something to you, you want to get attitude. And then married women should never be exposing their body that way. You don't caught the bus, you ain't running no more. Are y'all following me? I'm going somewhere with this. So how can a young man cleanse his ways? Taking heed to the word of God. And then we went over to John last week. Uh, my spoken word has made you clean. And we dealt with that in John 3, John 9. I want to go to John 17. But before I go to John 17, I want to go over to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Let's see if I'm making any sense. Because a lot of times when you present the word, not just to the world. So I'm talking to believers. I'm a pastor, teacher, perfecting saints. Because the world want to be, the church want to be too much like the world. And so we're being spoiled, we're being defeated and deflated by philosophy. Let's go over, Col what did I say, Colossians chapter 2 and, and verse 8. So, 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 so heaviness of the heart, anxiety of the heart causes depression, but a good what? Word from the Lord make one glad. Anybody receiving this word? In verse 8 of Colossians, notice what it says. Beware lest anyone cheat you. Anyone do what? 
cheat you through what? Philosophy and what else? Empty deceits according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the what? world, and not according to Christ. Be careful, because you get cheated. And now you're taking on the world, the world's way, and then defeat comes. Let me help you all. Let me help you. If you just watch a little news, if you watch the news for about five, ten minutes, it's all disaster. I don't even watch the local news. I watch national, but somebody, I don't even have to look at it to know somebody got killed. Somebody got carjacked. I got five, the inflation is just, everything's high. The gas is almost $5.29 a gallon. See, if you just listen to all of that, then you get cheated out of thanks be unto God who always calls me to triumph. See, no matter where I'm living at, no matter what I'm going through, God always calls me to triumph, leads me to victory. How does he do it in 2 Corinthians 2.14? Through the knowledge. So people are destroyed, Hosea 4 and 6, because of lack of knowledge. When you don't know anything, my father's tell us going to school, you know, even about driving, getting driver's license. If you don't do good in school, you're not going to get your license. You're not going to drive anyway because you can't read, you can't drive. <laughs> you can't read stop. If you can't read yield, if you can't read. And so since we were children, he said, you, you can't, it didn't make sense when we were young. But now I get on the highway, especially in Atlanta, and they're adding three more lanes every day. And if you don't know yield, if you don't know stop, if you don't know this lane you can't drive in, you will be on that HOV lane going the wrong way. So it's a value in knowledge. Knowledge is power. You get cheated when you unlearn. Your children are cheated. When they unlearn, then you, you want to be famous or be an athlete or be an actor, but, but if you can't read, if you're not smart, you get cheated. You can't let your children go to school 12 years and come out. People that have, it has happened and cannot read. If you went by the schoolhouse, you ought to learn something just going in there. Don't let anybody cheat you. So, so people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge of the word of God. And Paul's writing to the uh, church in Colossians and said the reason you're going through stuff and the reason things are happening in your life you don't know how to handle because you get caught up in philosophy. You get caught up in the study of knowledge. Listen to me. The love of knowledge. Some people are always trying to learn something new. Everything out, you're trying to learn. It. And don't know no scripture. You can write code for a computer. Come on, you can do software and hardware. And, and then if he asks you, uh, what does this say in Malachi 3, 6? I, I don't know. You can go in your office and be the top in the job, and, and I got promoted, and I'm the first black, and you're just so happy. But when it comes to scripture, don't y'all shout me down. See, you're cheating yourself. Somebody asked me the other day, what do you think about the, the, the vaccination? I hadn't even thought about it. See, I'm not trying to be a scientist or a doctor. Are y'all hear what I say? I'm a preacher of faith. I'm a preacher of the gospel. I'm a preacher of the word. And I'm standing on what he promised. Psalms 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed me. And I know Romans 14 said, let every man, verse 5, be persuaded in his own mind. So if you trust the vaccination, so be it. I'm not out here to get in a debate or people trying to pull you to a national conversation about the vaccination. I hadn't looked into it. And I don't have it in me. And God is keeping me. Y'all looking at me crazy. Because see, first attitude, you're going to say, he's just trying to all, the, all that faith stuff. I, I'm going to protect myself. I know some folk done got the shot and ain't here no more. So obviously it's not as sure as the word. Don't shout me down. But for me to get in a debate or discussion or philosophy or trying to be scientific about something I don't know nothing about, but I do know all things work together 
for the good of them. Come on, it said, we know. Anybody know all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose? You don't have to shout me down. I don't care if you shout. But I'm not getting in a debate. I'm not going there. Romans 14, 23, whatever is not of faith is sin. So if you're taking something and don't even believe in it anyway, you already defeated yourself. Thank God they're trying to do something scientifically to keep folk alive. They trying. But I serve a God that ain't trying. He already done what he promised. Thank God for a minute. You, you know, people don't ask me about Tylenol, aspirin, and high blood pressure uh, pills and diabetes pills. You're doing what you got to do to stay alive. Amen, somebody. So you can't live off my faith. You can't live off my conviction. I've never had a flu shot. You can't live off my conviction. So if you got faith in a thing, then you got to pursue what you have faith in. I got three amens. I, I, it doesn't matter. See, 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 see. Depression of the heart, anxiety of the heart caused depression, but a good word make you glad. Amen. I got something to trust. Amen. 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 So you, you, can, you can close your evil eye. All right, let's see. Let, what do you say? Verse 10, through verse 10. So don't let people cheat you with philosophy. That's the love of knowledge, the study of knowledge or wisdom. Uh, let me give you an example of that before I move on. Paul was in Corinth. I believe about the 17th chapter of Acts they were writing about it. And he comes to Mars Hill, which I was fortunate to go to Greece, Greece and Corinth and stood on Mars Hill. So I know the hill is not that big. It's just high enough like a platform. You walk up it and so the people below can hear what you were saying. And while he was at Mars Hill in Acts 17, they had uh, uh, an inscription written on their altar to an unknown God. Got to understand Mars Hill. Mars Hill was a place in Koran that people came to debate or learn new things. They always wanted to know what was the latest. It's like some of us believers. That's why God can't speak to you. We're running around trying to find every church, see what's the latest. What somebody said. And we're not listening for the word. Amen. Amen. And so Paul was outraged. He, he saw the inscription to an unknown God. He said, how dare you talk about God being unknown? He went on to say, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. See, people that don't know God don't have God on the inside of them. But if any man be in Christ, three believers, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. John 15, 7, if my word abide in you and you abide in it, you can ask what you will, that your joy might be full. See, the reason we have so much anxiety is that we're not walking in the truth. How can I pray or say or sing, he may not come when I want him, but he always on time. He lives in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Somebody that's been redeemed. So we got to beware. Did I read all the way down to verse 10? For in him dwells all fullness of the Godhead bodily in Christ Jesus. And you are what? Complete in him. You are what? Who is the head of all principalities and power. Is it only me to get excited about scripture? So Jesus has preeminence. Jesus is the head. Jesus is the final authority. It doesn't matter if you get that last verse. What the devil do, Jesus has power over him. Matthew 28, when he got up, he said, I got the keys of death and hell in my hand, and I got all power. Is there anybody believe he got all power? So there ain't nothing I'm going through in this world that I cannot trust God to bring me out. I can do all things through Christ. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'm casting down imagination and bringing every thought and argument into the obedience of his word. He's the head. That's why Ephesians said, be strong, put on the whole armor. You're not wrestling flesh and blood. You're wrestling principalities, power, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. 
I said, you got to get dressed. How many know you don't walk around naked? Are y'all hearing me? You got to get dressed. I was going to cover this last week, that nakedness, that Valentine's Day. I didn't mess with it because that was y'all Valentine's Day. Are y'all with me? But we caught up in so many pagan things. That holiday come, number one, from a Roman holiday, and all the men would get naked, since I mentioned naked, and run around town and slap women with a leather belt, and that would cause them to be impregnated. Or they would have preg uh, get pregnant. And then the Valentine came in when there was a, a, a person named Valentine that was encouraging and counseling Christians to get married. And when they got married, the Roman Empire didn't like that, that he was bringing Christians together. You know, Paul said, don't be unequally yoked. And so, so they, they put him in prison. And while he was in prison, you can look it up and study yourself, this philosophy. But we get caught up in philosophy, what I'm saying. We, we, we talk about we love on the 14th of February, but can't get along by the 16th. It's phony. And then you're buying chocolate and flour. Are y'all following me? Then they brought in Cupid. So, so the church took on, when Valentine was put in prison, because of his action, he, uh, 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 he tortured a young lady that was the daughter of the prisoner. And then praying for her and standing in the gap for her, she was tortured and she was blind and miraculously her eyes were open. And so before he was killed, they were getting ready to kill him. He wrote her a letter and giving God the praise for her deliverance. And he said, from Valentine. So that's what people get out of sending my Valentine. 200 years later, the Christian church made him a saint or a martyr and they, they discovered St. Valentine's Day. Are y'all with me? Now, you know about flowers and chocolate and roses and candy, but we don't know about Jesus. See, that's where people cheat you. You get caught up. Well, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong. You know, I can't get into Greek mythology with, with Cupid. I learned that in middle school, uh, elementary school. I had a black science teacher, and she would go all over all these myths. Matter of fact, one of them was when people say you, every time you sneeze, God bless you. How many of y'all still do it? Well, that's Greek mythology that when you sneeze, evil spirits come out of you. And so people would bless you. This was elementary school. You can't just bless me when I sneeze and run me over in the street. I was telling my wife yesterday, these people out here driving are like children with automobiles. And we whip our children by uh, being in order and... We correct them about not getting ahead, not trying to get in line before somebody. You see it in school, the pushing and the shoving. But just go out there and drive. I'm like, these are crazy children. She's like, why did that person cross over in front of you so close? I said, they're trying to tell me something. Because I'm not driving 80 miles an hour, so they're going to go around me. But when they get over, they try to act like they're going to take my bumper off. But see, if you're not sane, if you're not a Christian, if you're not a believer, if you don't have love in your heart, you're going to speed up and hit them. That's what I feel like doing sometimes. Oh, I have to fight the good fight of faith. Sometimes I make up, I, I have my mind be like, just ram them. Just, come on, just tear them up. I know none of y'all going through that. Because all y'all are holier than thou. But sometime in my heart, and that's why I be talking through it. Lord, help me, Jesus. Because I show me thinking. And I see them speeding up, and I'm trying to get over, and I'm just fussing with people. And they see you trying to get over, and they speed up faster. Oh, how stupid. And those same people, some of us sitting on, in somebody's church on Sunday morning. Because I sure have to pray in tongues. When I'm out there driving, I had to go to Duluth one day to my office, a uh, uh, real estate office, and so I had to drive to Duluth one morning. I'm like, this is insanity. And every so many miles, it's a fire truck and a police truck and, and a crash and the lanes block. I'm like, you people need to stop it. I be praying they get saved, just get saved. But don't let people teach you. You got to understand Jesus. Y'all get my point? Yeah. 
You're not wrestling flesh and blood. Now listen to me. If I go ahead and ram them and hit them and the police come, and then they got to give it, you know, and, and I'm telling you, I'm pastor of Covenant Christian Ministries in Marietta. And he might say, Pastor, you ought to have a little more control than that. So you got to cast down. Y'all get arguments. You have in the argument. That's what uh, anxiety is about. It's two ways to deal with it. You either avoid it or you approach it. You can't get in denial that you're so holy you ain't having the thought. It crosses my mind daily. And I'm looking at the evil people and I just be talking to them. Are y'all fine not cussing? And I'm like, you know better. I'm just having conversation. And some of you know those kind that drive past you and they know they did wrong, they just keep looking straight ahead. <laughs> Y'all never run into the open. I hope you don't belong to covenant. I hope you don't belong. <laughs> then we got bumper sticker, Jesus on board. Now y'all, but where he at? <laughs> you must be in the trunk because he's showing in your heart. <laughs> See, you get ready to pull in the space and they pull in there and just look straight ahead. We got bumpers in love of Jesus. People need to know you're my disciples by what you do. Let me finish. Let me finish. So, 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 so I'm going through Psalm 94, 19 right now in a multitude of anxieties within me. Your comforts delight my soul. Somebody give him praise. I said I'm going to John before I end, but I, I, I'm pulled over to Psalms 139. And some of you that's been in Bible study with us during the week, you've probably heard me read this and study it, but it, it, it bears necessity. Psalms 139. I, I want to get to verse number 23 and 24. I quoted that, but I have to go back to verse number one. You got to be honest with God. Somebody say you got to be honest with God. So what are we talking about today? The, uh, the, the remedy for anxiety. Be anxious for nothing. How many things ought to be anxious for? How many things ought to be worried about? How many things ought to be troubled about? but everything through prayer. Amen? So y'all see why I have to pray? You see why you have to pray? Because I, I be in the automobile sometime in the car, I'm, I'm praying. I saw myself the other day, and you know, eyes open, but I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I had to pray in the Holy Spirit. Some people out here, just coming up here today, they got one lane block and they doing some paving. And so people see you trying to get over and they got an uh, arrow showing you, get, and they speed up and get in front of you. We just like kindergartens. Are y'all, that's why somebody's talking about losing your religion. You better stand on this word. Yes, Psalms 139, verse 1, quick. I want to get 23, 24. We have a baby dedication today. I want to cover that before we end. All right, Psalms 139. Look at verse number 1. Lord, you have searched me and you know me. How many know God knows you? Is there anybody believe you can't fool God? You can't keep trying to overlook this. You've got to deal with it. Amen. The peace of God surpasses all understanding. Keeps your heart and mind. Search me, O Lord, you know, and know me. It says, uh, uh, you know my what? Sitting down. You know my rising up. You understand my thoughts. How? Afar off. You comprehend my path and my what? Lying down. And you are acquainted with all my ways. Somebody say, be honest with yourself. So to even say that I'm in faith, how many know God knows when I'm not in faith? Which is believing him, having confidence, conviction, trusting him and relying on his word. God knows when I'm not relying on him. And when you're trying to do it yourself, you're going to bring on what? Anxiety. Listen to me, people. Don't just try to talk faith when you're around believers. Then when you get home, pulling out your hair, I don't know what I'm going to do. Going to work, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't handle it. I can't stand my boss. You got to be able to deal with some things. God knows your ability. This goes along with 1 Corinthians or Corinthians 10, 13. There is no temptation that's not common to man. That God has already provided a way of escape. And with that way of escape will not allow you to be tempted no more than what you're able to bear. How many know every one of us can't bear or deal with the same pressure? Or we're not in faith and trying to pretend. Somebody say, search me, Lord. You need to get these first nine verses so you'll understand the rest. Look here. 
What did I leave off? Verse 3. You comprehend my path, my lying down. You acquainted with my, all my ways. For there is not a word, there is not a word on my tongue. But behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. There's not a word. So excusing yourself from cussing in front of the preacher. To cuss all the other time. You might as well take cuss in church. God knows every word that come out of my mouth. It's like the people that still smoke cigarettes, but they don't want you to know they smoke cigarettes, so they spray perfume all over them. And so now they smell like smoke and perfume. <laughs> or they eat peppermints. My, my sister and brothers used to try to convince me my father smoked and drank before I was born. He had 14 children. And when I get in an argument with him, sometimes I want to, you know, kind of smack him a little bit. Because you're talking about my daddy. But it was like, he wasn't always a preacher before you were born. He started preaching when I was four. So my majority of my life, he was a deacon before that. I only knew him as saved. And this is how they used to prove it to me. They said, well, if you go look in the glove compartment of his car, he said he don't smoke anymore, but he keeps a bag of peppermint. And the peppermint used to keep, kill the taste of smoking. So they would uh, show me that, so we'd go out there and steal the peppermints. <laughs> and he always wanted to hold up all my life. See, he didn't smoke all my life. Never heard him cuss. Never heard, seen him drink. I, all my life, he was a preacher and a deacon. But those that were older, out of 14, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? And so I used to always say to them, no matter what he used to be, I only know what he is now. Amen. And sometimes they want to use that excuse for their own actions. But if any man be in Christ. So I only knew him in Christ. And y'all knew him when he was part of this ministry. Because his life differed. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. How many know, other words, my point, God knows you. Somebody say God knows me. So, so, so every word that come off my tongue, he knows whether I'm in faith. You have hedged me behind and you hedged me. Lay your hands where? Upon. So how many know God has got me covered from the back and from the front? And then verse, verse 6 says, such knowledge is so uh, too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot even attain it because the peace of God surpasses all knowledge. Verse 7 says, where can I go from your spirit? And where can I flee from your presence? So all you that's in avoidance and trying to avoid the issue, whatever you in, God's in it with you. Verse 8 says, if I send to heaven, into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. How many know God is there? So this, this doesn't line up with he may not come when you want him. The Lord works in mysterious ways. Only thing mysterious is you don't know him. Because if I make my bed in hell, if you go to hell, God is there. It, 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 it said, goes on next verse, what else? If I take the wings of, of the morning and dwell in the uh, uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall do what? Lead me and your right hand shall. So those of you trying to avoid issues, God's in it. You trying to escape? Suicide is not the answer. You take wings and try to fly away and act like it's not happening. Verse 23, 24. I'm going to have to end here today. Somebody say a good word. Good word. I didn't even get over to John 17. Verse 23, what does it say? Search me, O God. What does it say? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. How many know God knows your anxieties? I said, how many know God knows your anxieties? He knows your weakness. That's why Hebrews tells us, come to the throne boldly. At the throne, we find grace and mercy to help us in time of need because we have a high priest that can identify with all your weaknesses. Verse 20, uh, uh, the last verse of that uh, passage. Read it aloud. And see if there's what? Any wicked way. Where is the wicked way? Where's the wicked way? Come on, where's the wicked way? Come on, where's the depression? Where's the anxiety? And some of these come as a result of us not believing God. 
See if there's any wicked way in me. And what do we want God to do today? Lead me in the way everlasting. Somebody praise him. I said somebody praise him. He'll take away your anxiety if you trust him. God already knows. There's nothing I'm going through he don't know about. There's nothing I'm going through he can't deal with. So if I'm going to worry, I don't need to pray. If I'm going to pray, I don't need to worry. Allow the peace of God to keep you. Come on, stand on your feet and give God praise.